water. Thank you, Louise, and uh, welcome, Wendy, um, to OPS Connect, and thank you for giving us your evening and uh, to be with us tonight. Um, and I would like to welcome Peter, uh, Peter Wright, who is presently working for the Investors Education Fund, supporting teachers with their many, many resources. That, and um, Peter will be highlighting these resources for us tonight, Wendy, and I know um, I certainly have a lot to learn, so hopefully you'll be able to answer a lot of your questions and, uh, and share with you the many resources that IES um, has to offer. Peter, I would ask that uh, possibly you could give us a bit more information. I was reading your uh, CV and it looks like you're a very busy man, um, so maybe you can tell us uh, what you've been doing since your, uh, your retirement as an official teacher. Um, right. Welcome, Peter. And by the way, I'm here with Sirhan. I guess I should tell you who I am. I'm Sirius Sirhan. I'm the facilitator and coordinator for the OTS uh, Professional Development Project. Peter, welcome, and I'll pass it over to you. OK, thanks, Sirhan. So uh, welcome, Wendy. And yes, just to give you some background, I was 35 years in the uh, classroom, and I sort of retired four years ago. But uh, now I'm working for the uh, Nipissing uh, Faculty of Ed out of North Bay and as a faculty advisor and also I teach AQ courses for Brock. I'm also a Ministry uh, Provincial Math Facilitator uh, and I've recently, I've always been interested in the sort of financial um, literacy component of our math courses and to be honest the lack of it. And so when this initiative started I uh, became interested in this and I've recently, recently become involved with IEF and I really like uh, the materials that they have. Um, there's a few other things that I do as well, but that's probably enough to give you some sort of a background. So, um, and Wendy, since it's just basically you and I, and you have, I should tell you that this is actually the first uh, uh, webinar I've done using this particular setup. I've done a number of webinars. I'm also a certified trainer for Explore Learning, and I've done a number of webinars using Adobe Connect for them and also for the ministry. But this is my first time with uh, Blackboard Collaborate, so uh, <laughs> I'm new to it. So you may have to uh, bear with me while I learn as well. <laughs> and since it's just the two of us, Wendy, let's be informal. Um, if you have a question, the best time to ask it or thought uh, is when you think of it. So uh, I noticed that you're not going to be using the mic. Uh, and so I'll be watching the chat box there. And uh, whenever you, you have anything for, to ask me or anything, please jump in or any idea to um, share or anything, please. So um, now I should explain here that um, as I, I'm, usually it's uh, Christine Allen, who's a manager for the educational programs with IEF, who does these webinars. And I'm standing in for her. And a lot of the material that I'm using today uh, is supplied by her. So if there's anything that you like in the webinar, it's probably from her. And if there's anything you don't like, maybe that's what I added to it. <laughs> so we'll see. So uh, you blame me for that. Or make me responsible. Uh, OK, I think that's everything at this point here. So let me see if I can. Yes, OK. So um, I was going to start off, Wendy, by just addressing Two questions, basically, why, what, and where? Uh, why are we suddenly teaching or putting a focus on financial literacy? What are the resources that are available for your curriculum? And then we will focus on specifically how can IEF help you uh, provide those uh, resources. And the, I'll try and uh, share with you the, as full as, as a, a spectrum as I can on the resources available from IEF. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to cover everything because, to be honest, IEF has a really broad range of things. But at least I'll show you how you can um, find the most used resources, and I'll show you where you can explore to find other ones that might meet your, meet your special needs as well. So uh, Louise, if I can ask you to share with us the, thank you very much, Louise. <laughs> I'll just this jump on for a, a second there. 
sorry, just to say that uh, Wendy, once we drop the link in, I hit enter, uh, the YouTube video will start right away. And Peter, did you want us to watch the whole video or up to a certain point? What would you like? We'll see. Um, I may ask you to stop it after a point. We'll see how we get, how it's going. All right. So which we'll person we're going to look at right now? Okay. And if the web tour doesn't happen to turn up, I'm going to put the link in the chat as well, and you can always watch it there. I think just about everybody except Amanda's got a check mark, but I know Amanda, you just uh, just logged in, and the okay. video is a, a good one to watch for you later. But uh, suffice it to say, it's an embarrassing uh, moment for Patricia Heaton, unable to, uh, to quickly answer basic math questions. Yeah. And I mean, it addresses both financial literacy, but it also addresses math phobia as well. So, but um, okay, so. I think we'll probably agree that there is a need. Um, thank you, Louise. OK. Uh, so the question then is, what resources are available for your curriculum? Um, and this is actually an initiative which is from IEF, which is also uh, sort of a joint initiative hand in hand with uh, the Ministry of Education. And they have some supporting materials on their websites, EduGains, which um, Amanda and Wendy, can you indicate with a check mark if you are familiar with the EduGains websites, please? OK, that's great. That makes it easier. So uh, I don't know if you know that just uh, a few weeks ago, they changed the format of their websites. But if you go to the uh, website, you can easily get to the financial literacy section. And the page I'm displaying, I know it's not very uh, high resolution there, is the page for elementary resources. And those uh, five windows down the bottom there are grades four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there are some really neat resources on that page. And the ministry's resources basically complement what IEF has. And then on the right-hand side there is a web page that you'll be seeing quite a bit of during this uh, webinar this evening. That's the sort of main access point for the resources from uh, IEF. And so specifically, how can IEF help? Well, they have a variety of resources. They have games. They have interactive tools. They have lesson plans. And uh, this initiative is for grades 4 through 12, all subject areas. And although it specifies all, um, Amanda, uh, Wendy shared with us earlier on that she's uh, teaching grade 6 currently. Amanda, what uh, grade are you teaching, please? OK, great. So we're in the uh, upper end of the uh, bracket there. Because I was going to say that some of the grades for five resources can be uh, easily adapted to uh, lower grades. But you're 6, 7, and 8, so that makes things a little bit easier. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on a little bit. Uh, I probably should, OK, again, I'll ask a question. I, are either of you familiar with the Investor Education Fund, IAF? OK, Amanda is not. And Wendy? No, OK. I think you're going to like this. I did when I first heard of this. Um, 
every so often we hear about the Ontario Securities Commission. Uh, typically when they are in the news because they have fined the company for transgressing the regulations for the stock exchange uh, and those fines are sort of usually very substantial amounts of money. And uh, I never asked myself where those fines went to. I just assumed they got swallowed up in the big sort of government of Ontario coffers. Well, it turns out not so. The fines that the Ontario Securities Commission levies go to Investor Education Fund, whose mandate is to promote the understanding of financial matters by everybody in the province of Ontario, not just school children, but adults as well. And so they have a ton of resources available there um, to help all sectors of our community. And we're fortunate that a, a few years ago, they've been around now I think for about 11 years, 11 or 12 years. And um, about three years ago, um, the ministry decided that there was a need for sort of improved financial literacy in our schools. And so they got together with IEF and IEF have put together some really excellent resources specifically for our classrooms. Um, so as you see there, uh, it does help consumers get answers to their money questions as well. I won't be focusing as much on that sector of their work, but I'll be showing you where you can go on the website to get that type of information as well. And it definitely helps teachers integrate financial literacy into the classroom. Amanda, before you arrive, I mentioned to Wendy that, um, especially since we're a small group, if you have any thoughts or questions you want to share with us, the best time to do that is when you think of them. And I'm very comfortable with that. So just jump in right away. Uh, if you want to use a microphone, you can. Or if you want to use the chat pod, uh, I'll be watching that as well. So. OK, so let's focus, first of all, on these uh, teaching resources. They are curriculum-based lesson plans and tools. They introduce the financial concepts and issues, and they <coughs> develop and assess the financial um, knowledge. Um, and their focus pr primarily is to try and put as many resources in your hands as the, ed as the educator that you can use to best deliver it to the students, because the feeling is that you are the best qualified people to get this message across to them. So there's some uh, slides there on the, uh, or pictures there on the screen there that uh, show some of the, res the resources. There's a money timeline, which uh, I can show you later on if you want to go there. There's a really neat uh, game called Cranial Cash Clash that we'll uh, play at the end. There are various lesson materials, very complete. Uh, very well designed, very creatively designed at times. Um, there was one, um, I know this is outside of your age range, but I was surprised to see this for a grade nine science class on the economic impl implications of an influenza uh, epidemic and the uh, sort of uh, the role of vaccination in that cost factor. So some of them are, are quite different and quite challenging. Um, Okay. Okay, here's a little uh, exercise. I'd like each of you, please, or both of you, I should say, um, to please put a check mark next to the animal which you think best represents your financial personality. So this is a, a lion, a seal, a deer, and a beaver. So without knowing anything about them. OK, thank you, Sarah and Louise. And Peter, I'll just uh, add that you can use your clip art tool, so the very bottom tool of your tool strip again, and then go to the Common Symbols tab. And you can grab one of the fun shapes there and drop it on top of one of the animals to show which one you are. OK, so we have somebody who thinks they're a deer. Somebody thinks they're a beaver. OK, I'm look, and uh, we've got a couple of beavers. Very Canadian tonight. That's good. I put a beaver on the river outside my house. OK. 
the C3 there, but uh, okay. Well, these are the uh, descriptions, and I, this is not uh, my game, but I okay. Then we have a seal. Okay, so nobody thinks that they are a lion. Well, the lion is a predator. They make a killing on the stock market. They lion wait. They look for deals. They're aggressive, and they spend all their money. So that's none of us. Seal. Their characteristics are they balance and juggle. Sometimes money savvy. Sometimes not maybe. They're playful. They're not too serious about money. They're very hard working and they work hard to save and invest. So no idea who thinks they're a seal, but it's interesting. The deer. Okay, that's a skittish animal. They're careful with money. They're risk averse. Deer in the headlights. Not financial savvy. And now the beaver, a dam builder, prepares for emergency, a hoarder, a hard worker, a saver. There we are. Okay, so. I'm trying to think which one I put myself down for there. I think I put myself down for the beaver when I first saw this. I have to admit, I'm okay. the seal. <laughs> Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm going to ask some people to identify who they were there, but that's okay. Thanks. Yeah. So I felt so kind of like uh, identifying myself because, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of an, an, an interesting way of looking at things, though. Okay. So now we're going to do some thinking about financial literacy. The choices that we make usually have a financial component. So. What financial choices have we made today? Anybody have any suggestions to share in the uh, chat box? Okay, we got a bashful lot. Today. Oh, okay. There we are, Wendy. Okay. Okay. And you know, buying new shoes is something special, but even simple everyday decisions like buying breakfast. Yesterday I was on the road and I realized I wasn't going to be I was going to be busy over the lunch hour, and so I bought my I stopped at Timmy's and I bought stuff a bit at breakfast. It was convenient. Um, sometimes we buy lunch and coffee for the sake of convenience. It may not be economically the most efficient way of doing it, but convenience is sometimes important for us. Um, hey, looks like both of you took advantage of a free webinar. Okay, you save yourself some money. Um, I don't know. Did anybody take uh, use public transit today? It's the driving. No, well, Louise. Okay, I had a meeting at uh, OCT on Monday. I took the uh, go train in. It was beautiful, relaxed. Okay. So let's actually look at what financial literacy really is. It's definitely a disconnect between knowledge and application. Many of us know how to calculate our mortgage payments, but sometimes it's convenient to take a longer amortization pay uh, period that reduces those monthly payments. Research tells us that the average Canadian post-secondary student debt upon graduation is almost $27,000. Now. If I was to ask you, what are the primary categories that high school students are saving for? Anybody uh, has some suggestions as to what might be amongst the top five? Okay. When you think of car, we're looking at several different uh, categories. So entertainment. Okay. Any other ideas, uh, Wendy? Yeah. Amanda, any thoughts about what do you think uh, are most of our high school students saving for these days? Cell phone, car, clothes, food, education. 
that's interesting. I've got five granddaughters, uh, four granddaughters, and a grandson. And yeah, I can definitely relate to what you're saying there, Amanda. Um, okay. Well, you may be as surprised as I was when you see this next slide. Remember that twenty-seven thousand dollar debt that they'll end up with at the end of their education. Okay. Clothing is number one. Entertainment. Strong. Technology. You have that right. Gifts, even. And then education. Yes, when you when I saw that listed there, um, I hadn't thought that before, but uh, you're right. Uh, that is interesting. Maybe they're just relying on the parents to give them a car. Then go to university. <laughs> right. Okay, so so the uh, Federal Task Force on Financial Literacy report recommended financial literacy education be integrated into the elementary and secondary curriculum, which is consistent with the working group on financial literacy recommendations. IEF, IEF came up with their Mind Over Money program, and this is unique to the IEF resources because it's a program of complete set lesson plans. They're linked to the Ministry of Education curriculum and to the financial literacy concept map, which I'm going to be showing you very soon. This was put together by IEF. Just to give you a little bit of a background there, I should share with you that the lesson plans were developed in collaboration with OISE and the University of Toronto. OISE actually had conducted a jurisdictional scan of available resources, and then they developed the program to fill the gaps left from what was already available for teachers. There wasn't a program that gave direction on which specific topics in financial literacy should be covered, and you know, what ages students should be ready to learn each topic. So this is why the concept map was developed by IEF with some expert input there. Um, so these lesson plans, as I mentioned to you, they are grades 4 to 12. They are cross-curricular. There are interactive tools. And is either of you involved in uh, French immersion programs? Wendy or Amanda? Wendy is. Amanda is not. OK, so then, Wendy, you will be delighted to hear that these resources are all available in French as well. So yes. I was in a high school in Brantford a couple of weeks ago there. Um, assessing one of my uh, Nipissing student teachers who was teaching in French. And uh, I happened to share this resource, this uh, site, with the uh, department head there. He had never seen it before. He was absolutely blown away by it. So oh, OK. But don't forget, these are resources for all subject areas. So you can choose which subjects are being focused on in the uh, French language. And you'll find some really neat uh, materials there. OK. So the financial literacy concept map looks something like this. Now, this is covering all the grades 4 to 12. And obviously, you can't read it there. Um, if you indicate a check mark, I can, uh, we can, uh, I think Louise can uh, get us to actually go to the website, but I suspect you may want to go there on your own at a time later on and look at it. Uh, I do have one more slide relating to this, which is a little bit clearer after this one. Um, one thing you might want to notice there is, OK, there are five categories. And actually, I'm going to go ahead to the next slide just to identify those, and I'll come back to this one. So the five categories um, are planning for the future, economy, spending, saving, and money basics. And if I go back to the previous one, you'll notice that that planning for the future, that doesn't start until grade 9. And I think we can understand why that would be. And so the various strands um, 
in the other areas there, they apply the different grade levels. So in grade four, we're asking students to describe the concept of saving money. Uh, grade eight, we're asking them to understand sales taxes and calculate um, sales taxes. And then by grade 12, it's reasonable to ask them to compare current and, his and historical trends in money and so on. I'm going to um, take time to share with you a little personal story here. Um, I have a uh, granddaughter who this year is in uh, grade seven, my youngest one, but uh, last year she was in grade six, and uh, she has a learning disability actually, and she's not academically strong. And when she comes home from school, you ask her what she did today, and she always says nothing. And you know, if you try and probe a little bit further, you get one-word answers, and they're usually not very positive. And one day she came home, and I happened to be in the uh, kitchen and talking to my daughter. And uh, Taylor walked in, and she started talking about this lesson that they've had that day about budgeting. And they had been given some beans, and they had to spend the beans on various categories. And she and her friend Naomi had decided that if they rented an apartment together, then they would be able to save some beans collectively. And they also decided that they were actually going to try and get an apartment downtown, because then they wouldn't need to have a car, and they wouldn't need to have to uh, pay any beans for the uh, car payments or for the automobile insurance. And she just went on and on and on. And my daughter and I just stood there and looked at each other, and we couldn't stop her talking. Now, this is actually not an IEF lesson, but it does reinforce that it's not too early to start talking about these ideas with the students. Okay? And uh, certainly, I know, I know from having seen my own children, but more especially with my uh, grandchildren, when they were young, they were very money conscious. And money meant something to them. And so um, I'm pleased that we're starting to address this at the earlier grades. There. OK. Uh, let's look and see if my notes to see if there's anything there. Okay. Anything more that I should share with you, but I think that's pretty well covered things. So, is there anybody who's specific, uh, Amanda or Wendy, who would specifically like to see that uh, financial con the concept map in more detail? We will be giving you links for these, and I think that's uh, what Louise has put in the uh, chat box there right now. Um, so, okay, Amanda's got it. Great. Okay. Good. Thank you, Louise. So, I'm going to look now at some uh, specific lessons. Uh, just broadly, first of all, and uh, then we'll come back and look at one of these in a little bit more detail. So the first one um, is what influences our spending. This is intended for grade six. Um, so It addresses media literacy and purchasing decisions. And I'm hoping you can see on your screens there that the, let the material that you get, and this is only just one page of the, material, of the material package, and we'll look at one complete package in a few minutes. But um, the material starts off by addressing the specific curriculum expectations taken usually out of our, well, not taken, usually taken always out of our um, on Ontario Ministry guidelines. Uh, there are notes on assessment, details about what you need to get started, and then there are the different activities. On this page here, we can only see the minds on activity described there, but as I say, we'll look at one in detail and you'll see that all three of the lesson components are there in detail with all the necessary handouts and sometimes some um, appendices. I did one recently where we supplied a, uh, an appendix on how to use various forms of technology to assist with the lesson. Um, so basically, every type of resource that you might need is usually attached to it. I've been very impressed with uh, these materials, and I recommend them to some of my nipping student teachers, and they just love this stuff. Um, 
seeing that section there on Minds On reminds me about uh, I showed you earlier on the um, EduGains webpage uh, on financial literacy. And one of the specific resources which is available on that page is they have some really neat video clips specifically on teaching a Minds On co component um, on one of these IEF lesson packages to whatever grade you want, um, or just how to teach the action part of it, or a video clip just focusing on the consolidation component of it. You can see the whole lesson if you want to, but as I say, they have uh, little short video clips just focusing on um, the minds on uh, component or the action or the consolidation component. And uh, again, um, I found a lot of my student teachers, but also some of my uh, uh, teachers have found those quite interesting and useful. Okay. Now that's the grade six one for grade five. And since you're six, seven, and eight, um, I actually didn't include a lot of seven and eight stuff. And I'll uh, sorry about that, uh, Amanda. But uh, we'll see what we can do here. Um, this is one on pennywise counting change. Um, and again, it focuses on estimation and it has the students counting in real life situations. Peter, I'm wondering, do you want to try okay. and drop uh, one of these links into our web tour? And uh, Amanda yes. and Wendy could take a closer look, or do you have that planned for a particular lesson coming up? I was actually going to be asking right now which of these we are going to go okay. to. So I'm thinking that we'll probably go to the uh, grade six one, or maybe. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, deviate from the script a little bit, uh, Louise, if you don't no mind. No problem. And um, if we can go to the IEF uh, web page and we can uh, bring up the uh, grade six, seven, and eight, and we can, uh, we'll, we'll, I think we have time to, uh, today. We can actually do a grade six one and a grade seven or grade eight one as well. All right, terrific. So if you can go to the, I will drop the IEF. Uh, Firefinanciallearning.ca, and here we go. And, and let's see how it looks we'll tonight. Yes. Time. Yes. So, um, <laughs> just what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm going to pop that link in the chat again, just in case. So, uh, um, the the new in Inspire Financial Learning website looks a little odd in the web tour. It's fully functioning, but it's not laid out the way it normally is. And of course, the real link in the chat, if you'd prefer to open that and then follow along when uh, Peter guides you with the selection. That's OK, too. But it does work here in the web tour. It just looks a little off. OK, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, we'll work with this. So first of all, I'll click on the, now, I think I have to click something up here. So does everybody see that now, Louise? As long well, as you've just got your follow me box checked. Yes, and then once I did. you okay. actually uh, okay. search some of those resources, then that'll work. So I just clicked on the resource, and I'm going to come up with lesson plan. And what happens is it will then show me all well, a selection of lesson plans, but so far they're not sorted by grade or by subject. That box over on the uh, top right-hand side there, where it's, it almost looks like BL, but it's really by grade. And so now I am going to go to um, grade, well, let's actually look at grade 7. And Amanda or Wendy, do you want to suggest a subject for me? OK, I, I meant a sort of curriculum subject. Oh, OK, you're saying the supermarket one. OK, you want this one. OK, let's go to this one. That's good, Wendy. OK. OK. So when you click on that, this is what you see. So a little bit more information about the actual lesson. Um, this is a health and physical education subject and also applies to mathematics as well. Financial literacy objectives, topics that are being covered here. And then we can, uh, now Louise, if I click on the download lesson plan, will it uh, show on the screen? Let's find out. 
I'm not sure which one to click on. I'm going to click on the uh, PDF one, I guess. Okay. I'm not sure what the other one does. Oh. Now I see it on my. It's opening up on my screen, but separate in a separate window. Yes, that's right. Okay. So All I'm right. So you know, Wendy and Amanda, feel free to go ahead and click to download the lesson plan and see what the uh, the full document ends up looking like. And I noticed I was just going to type in the chat there. If you scroll all the way down below the feedback area, um, it's got some related resources. So if you'd like a particular one there, you can just keep on going through to connect to some of the other stuff. Nice. Actually, I think what, I, what I'm going to do, Wendy and Amanda, is I'm going to give you five minutes just to play with this and explore it on your own. Is that good with you both? Amanda? OK. <laughs> That's nice to hear, Wendy. Thank you. OK, I have set a timer for us, so that'll give us a little ding. So uh, you guys go off and explore, and definitely pop back if you've got questions or come across some really spectacular nugget, which I know you will. I hadn't actually gone into the details of this lesson before myself, so I'm going in there right now. It's come up and sweet. Peter, I see Amanda's put a, a question in there and another Sorry, comment my there. Box is covered over. Yes, no, I was off looking as well. Yes, Amanda, they are. Uh, uh, I'm saying that, uh, as far as I know, uh, the ones that I'm aware of the origin um, their teacher created. And uh, I was asked actually to uh, write one of them as well. So I'm a teacher, so I can touch myself. <laughs> so I'm going I'm, I'm to say yes, I'm sure. Um, OK, I'm looking. OK, I'm looking at your earlier comment in our Amanda. Well, 
Wendy, that comment of yours is one I'm up against all the time. So I, I'm just looking now at the uh, chat pod there about sharing with other people. There's so many great resources out there, and a lot of us don't know about them. I knew very little about Educanes. In fact, I don't think I knew about Educanes until I actually left the classroom. And I consider myself a relatively proactive teacher. Your comment, Amanda, about the assessment not matching the uh, um, curriculum expectations, that's interesting. Um, I know IEF welcomes criticism, so uh, that might be a, uh, a um, comment you might want to uh, share with IEF directly. Um, I know I was called in because they had had some criticism of one of the grade 10 lessons, and they asked me to review it, and I agreed with the criticisms. And then we, it was, it was basically a, a good lesson, but the, there were some points that were being criticized. And so we um, changed it. OK, I see Amanda's away now, so I'll wait until she comes back. OK. So Wendy, you're going to be our emissary. <laughs> oh, I hope nothing serious happened for poor Amanda. Oh, you lost totally now, yes. Unless she got bumped. We'll see if she comes back. All right, continue on. Okay, I'm just scrolling through the uh, chat pod now. I, okay. Okay, Wendy, I'm seeing your comment about Amanda's comment about the uh, and the assessment there. Okay. Good. Okay. So, uh, Syria and Louise, yeah, I've got a comment. Maybe we can uh, share some stuff with Amanda afterwards. Mm -hmm. so. Yep, definitely. Okay. Would okay. you like us to pop back to the okay. the slides now, Peter? Uh, yes, please. Um, I'm thinking that we have some time. Do you would you like us to uh, Wendy to look at a grade six lesson plan in more detail, or do you think you've got the uh, sense from what we've seen so far and seen the availability of the resources and so on? Okay, Wendy. Great. So we move on then. Um, this actually is a grade six one. It's a tower building on a budget. Um, so this is one where it's quite an interesting activity. And certainly, if you have some students in your class for whom uh, alternate um, or multiple learning styles are appropriate, uh, this is one that uh, you might find more useful here. Um, I've been working with a lot of uh, learning disabled students recently. In fact, I, one of the projects I'm working on for the ministry is teaching mathematics to learning disabled students. And uh, things like this, where they're hands-on, um, are really uh, often, if, if, if something which is necessary for some, sorry, essential for some, but good for all. Here we go. OK. And again, this is something which can be adapted and used in a variety of grades. Um, my last school, 85% of my students were identified, and they were in grade nine. They were uh, had numeracy and literacy skills at about a grade four, or grade six level, and I could have used a lot of this stuff very easily, and the uh, students would have loved it. Okay. Okay. Another activity which is really versatile uh, is technically labeled grade four. Um, is the duct tape wallet uh, activity. Um, it's listed in grade four as both a math activity and a uh, visual arts activity. Um, and there are different lesson plans for both emphases. Uh, and this is something which, uh, on the left-hand side there, this is the duct tape wallet photo gallery. Um, when Chris has been going around and doing workshops, uh, they often have the participants, she takes them duct tape with her and has the participants actually do this activity. And those are some of the samples that uh, have been produced in this. It's uh, 
it's really fun and really interesting. Something else which uh, they have on their website is kids actually talking about money. Um, I mentioned the uh, video clips on the uh, EduGains or math or the financial literacy gains uh, pages there, but there's some here with uh, on the IF pages as well. And Louise, are you able to uh, play part of this one for us, please? Absolutely. There we go. So this is uh, Emma's video. Oh. I have this video in another location as well. Hang on a second there. We will go and get that. There we go. This should be it. OK. That's looking good. I've been talking away for the last uh, two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, <laughs> OK. So um, first of all, before we do go away, I just, oh, can we go back, uh, Louise? Sorry. Sorry about that. That's OK. Now, if you were going to say something about uh, some different links on the page, they may show up differently for everyone. OK. I was going to ask, um, we can stop the video. Oh. Yes, you'll each have to stop the video yourself or just pause okay. it there. OK. Um, Wendy, I just wanted to draw your attention. If you can see it, at the top right-hand side on the uh, there is a list of various videos and descriptions of them. And the first one is in French, the savoir vaut plus que les avoir, and the uh, interroge des experts. Um, can you see that on yours, Wendy? OK, great, OK. And Wendy, I just realized, again, this is something I was uh, saying to you when I didn't have my mic on. <laughs> um, I forgot earlier on when we were at the page for the resources by uh, resource, grade, and subject area. Uh, above those um, pull-down menus, there is a button that you can, or a link that you can click on that will give you everything in French. Uh, do you notice that at the, at the time? If not, we can. Okay, if we have a, can we easily go back to that page, uh, Louise? Oh, yep, absolutely. Hang on a second. I'll flip back. In in fact, sorry, Louise, I'm I really testing you, aren't I? <laughs> no, not at all. I was just checking it and clicked on it myself. So the link I've just dropped into the web tour is actually the French page. Um, but we will be able to see that there's the button. Uh, you just might have to slide your bar at the bottom over to the right a little bit to see that just above the header, um, you've got the option to click English. To Wonderful, Louise. To OK. To English. And so there, so that's what it looks like. And you can see where that, uh, where it says English now. That's where before it said Francais. And so that's how you can get the information that you want there. So. OK, that's great. Uh, so now we'll go back to the, yes, OK. Um, I don't think I'm going to take time to go into that second one there. That's a sort of um, summative uh, project, the video on the right-hand side there. But it's uh, well worth going to, and it's accessible from the IEF page there. As I said uh, at the beginning, Wendy, there's so many resources there, and it would take, you know, I think we need twice as much time as we have to, uh, and then we wouldn't even see all of them either. 
So I'll move on a little bit to show you a few different features. Um, so there are some interactive tools. Just okay. Um, this one is dollar decisions, uh, action and consequence applications. There are three different episodes here. Um, saving for laptop, which is recommended for grade seven and above. But you know, um, I'm not sure who made that recommendation of grade seven and above, but the way that I'm seeing younger students using technology and their computers and that these days, uh, I'm thinking that that could apply a lot lower than grade seven these days. <laughs> Interesting reflection on where we are with technology and society. Uh, back to school smarts, that's saving for school expenses, including calling. And then there's a uh, one at the end there, education pay play, uh, that's intended for some higher grades. But uh, it might be interesting to sort of go in there and see. As I said, a lot of these things you can, uh, these days, you can adapt slightly and use maybe in a small extent with a uh, lower class. OK. This is something which I found really, really interesting. Um, the history of money timeline. And uh, there's a lot of features here. Uh, this is one of the uh, resources which is available from that resource page. Um, and uh, it's a really neat one. Um, I actually learned a lot by looking uh, some of the uh, going along the timeline here. Um, I learned a few things myself. There is also a parent section, and there's activities based on delayed gratification, the blind taste test. There's worksheets there. Um, I have a note that was written to myself here, and I can't read my own writing. So anyway, we'll pass on me on that. Um, these are some of the things for the uh, parents. So I'm going to go on more quickly because I think we want to see the teacher resources. This is Cranial Cash Clash. And yes, let's play this one. Can we, Louise? Yes, absolutely, we can play that. Let me just go grab the link for you here. Do, do, do. Sorry, I have a good number of windows open here. Here it is. Now hopefully this one's going to show up OK in the web tour. So here it comes. There. OK. So hopefully you're seeing that all OK. You may have to scroll things around a little bit to see the, the different games there in the center. Keeps on flashing in and out for me. Oh, does it? Uh, what does it look like for you, Wendy? We can just, uh, all right, looks good to you? OK, we could just, just click on the link in the chat as well. Uh, Peter, you're familiar with what's there. Um, I can also uh, just click on things as well. But actually, uh, Peter, uh, why don't you just describe what you'd like uh, us to try? I can see the three different uh, games there in the, we've got the family financial okay. space office, what I'm seeing, gift trip, and ready, set, retire. Although I know there's a lot more than that. Um, OK. Right. I actually happen to have this on my laptop as well. So. 
in, in preparation. OK. Um, so, Wendy, can you see the link there which gives you the gift thrift investment shopping or the scan exam? OK. How about you choose one that you'd like to play? And tell me which one, and I'm going to play it as well. We won't see each other playing, but I'm just curious to see what's there. Uh, some of the stuff is a little bit new for me as well. I've been into one of these games. So the guess one, OK. Uh, I didn't go there earlier, so that's good. So am I ready to play? I guess I am. Click on Go. Okay, so I got the first one wrong. Okay. I thought I would do some research. Okay. Ah, now I see why. Now, do you notice uh, what's happening to the brain? It changes. Um, I've done this actually with a couple of kids. And they notice it right away. Uh, when they get the, an answer right, the brain gets bigger. If they get an answer wrong, well, it shrinks. So this is kind of a fun one. Um, the kids do like it. OK. I'm suggesting you play around with it for a couple of minutes, Wendy, and then uh, let us know when you would like to uh, get back to things. Okay, I see your comment there, Wendy. All right, Peter. Okay, okay back Wendy. Here. So we'll finish things up very quickly. Um, okay, that's one of the blogs that's there. One thing I didn't mention to you, actually, let me see if I can get it back from this one here. No, it's not so obvious from that page. At the um, page that we showed you about the resources, at the very top of that page, you'll see there are links to three other um, IEF pages. And it's really worthwhile exploring all the other links there. There's one blog. And uh, certainly, I found some comments on the blog that were of interest to teenagers um, sometimes. Um, it varies, of course, depends who's been blogging recently. Uh, so, uh, but it's uh, the other links at the top of that page are definitely worth exploring. So, okay. Um, if you're under some pressure, then uh, Wendy, I think uh, we'll we can skip this one. Um, Wendy, do you have any uh, questions specifically, or any aspect that you'd like me to address before we uh, do finish things? OK. In that case, then, I'm going to sort of uh, wrap things up. And uh, we would appreciate um, your feedback, please, Wendy. So if you could go to that survey. Um, uh, if you have some urgent needs right now that need to be attended to, then if you want to make a, if you want to bookmark that link, uh, you could go there later. And I think Louise has um, a uh, survey for you to uh, go to as well. Uh, this one is for, for IEF. Um, I have shared with you there Chris's um, that phone you can hear is, is my end. Sorry about that. That's OK. Murphy's Law. I think my wife is going to take it up. Yes. I think you have the same phone as me, Peter. 
it makes our basset hound howl when the, the numbers get called out. It's really funny. I, I just hung up on somebody, so I have no oh, idea no. who. <laughs> okay. um, I hope it's not an emergency. <laughs> Thank you. It, 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 it wasn't the family number, no. Um, okay. Anyway, I've got the, the well, you're fast, Wendy. Um, OK, I've uh, shared with you Chris Allen's email. If you want some information from Chris at, uh, invest at IEF, she would be very pleased to help you. And also, I've included my email there at the bottom. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, please feel free to, if you think I can help you with anything. Um, and I think. That concludes my part of it. OK. And now you're ahead of me there, when, uh, Louise, I guess. No problem. It's going to happen automatically. No, no problem. Thank you. I know Syria's going to jump on. And, and thanks, Wendy. And, and uh, we'll send you the follow-up email so you can do our survey um, when you get that if you, uh, if you don't have a moment to fill it out now. But it's short, too. Over to you, Syria. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter, for sharing so many of the uh, many resources that IES um, has developed to support teachers um, as they integrate financial literacy in their classroom. Um, this is a, it's been a great webinar. And hopefully, Wendy, um, thank you for joining us tonight, giving of your time. I, I hope you found this useful. Please do share. Um, the resources or the the IEF website with your colleagues, and I would think this is a great uh, webinar um, to review. We do um, we do record the sessions, and and they are there for everyone to to access. So someone earlier was saying, how do people find out about these resources? So hopefully you can share this with your colleagues, that they too can either watch the webinar. Uh, to look at specific resources or go on the IES, uh, IES website um, to, to access these marvelous uh, resources where they're free for teachers. I'm really appreciative uh, to you, Peter, and to IES for providing OTS and its members with this opportunity. Um, Wendy, if you do have a chance, please give us your feedback. Uh, Louisa took the uh, URL, the time URL there in the middle of the slide. Um, we do appreciate your feedback. And uh, do share the OTF Connect uh, link with your colleagues so that they can access other upcoming um, webinars that we, we have to, to support teachers. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Wendy, thank you for being so brave and sticking through to the very end. Thank you.